Hey everyone, this is Viper here. I just wanted to do a quick little video on where I have been. I know I haven't been putting any writing videos up um, for a while, and uh, there's a reason for that. There's been um, a lot of problems with the machines. Um, I've got the side-by-side, -side, the CF Moto, and I've got my quad. I've got a couple of videos on my quad that we did from last year. Um, not too many videos of that. But the reason for the lack of videos is because the side-by-side -side has been down for pretty much most of last year and so far this year. I've um, made some blunders when, when doing some maintenance on it. First of all, the when I installed the harnesses, I got a little too carried away and I drilled down, I was drilling a hole through to make the bolt bigger, make the hole bigger for the bolt. And I accidentally put a small hole in the top of the gas tank. I didn't think it was that big of a hole because it was just a small drill bit. Turned out I was wrong. I actually submerged the machine in some deep water and it wasn't that deep, it was just a little puff of past the tires. And uh, it got some water in the gas tank, and that was just had that had it in the shop for a while to get that out. I had to um, clean out the gas tank, flush the gas tank out, flush the entire fuel system. So that took some time. And uh, then now the problem that I have with it now is it has a bad oil leak, and that's also again my fault because I was in a hurry to go back out and ride again. Shouldn't do that. Shouldn't be in such a hurry. And I was thinking that it took four quarts of oil. It takes a little over three quarts. Now, it would, probably wouldn't have been that bad because, I mean, some of it would have leaked out and would have gone out on the motor, would have leaked out on the, on the floor. But then I got on it and ran it pretty hard right after that. And I blew the seal. So it's got a, it's, it leaks right where the two halves of the motor come together and split. So it's currently in the shop. Um, been waiting a while to get um, the funds to put it in the sh to take it to the shop and get it fixed. So now I finally got it in the shop. Now it's been there for a week. So um, they told me two to three weeks, and um, I should get it back. So I'm hoping another week or two, you know, I should have it back again. We've got some uh, trips being planned um, to Silver Lake, and we want to do the um, the trek across the bridge, the Mekong Bridge. That'll be cool. We've been wanting to do that for a long time now, so hopefully we'll be able to have it back by then. Um, those are in September, those those trips. So uh, that's where I've been. That's my reason for my absence. I mean, certainly want to put more, more videos up. Of course, there's also been the COVID-19 has been a problem, but not too much for the riding areas. I think the riding areas have been pretty much, well, not all of them, up north, St. Helen and and bull gap mile area those have been all open i don't think those ever close as far as i know and uh but the other riding areas like silver lake bundy hill um all those places like that those were all closed because of the covid so that's another problem too is you know it's been it's been um, kind of hit and miss on that <clears throat> so hopefully soon we'll be able to get some more riding in um and uh get some more videos up now, I've always wanted to do a video, ever since I've owned the machine, on how the CF Moto is, my thoughts on the CF Moto. I've got about 1,200 miles on my machine now. And um, I got to say that the machine has been an absolute blast. It's been, there's times that, you know, I'm, I'm making payments on the machine. I'm thinking to myself, you know, why did I buy that thing? Well, and then I get in in the machine and go for a ride and it's like yeah this is why i bought it because it's it's so much fun to have you know um and it's been it's been a blast i've i've enjoyed every ride with that thing it's been a lot of fun to have now i will say that there are some things about it that are not you know comparable to the big machines like the big companies like polaris and can-am but uh and that is a suspension one, that's one thing that the that the machine does lack in. And um, it's got decent suspension like we 
lived on a, on a really rough road, really a uh, bad road. It was just really bumpy and, um, you know, potholes and, and patches and things, and it was really bad. So you, would, you couldn't go over it very fast with a car, but you could fly it on the road with that thing, and um, it would just soak up the bumps. Well, that kind of stuff is fine, but when you're going over a whoop to doos it doesn't handle very well. It'll kind of buck you off, and you got to be careful on those because it can throw you off and throw you out of control because the suspension is just not, just not there. It's not adequate for that. So one case in point, we went to... Um, my, my nephew and his girlfriend and I, we went to, um, did a trip up north. We were, we rode from St. Helen to Houghton Lake. And I never recorded anything from that video because it was a horrible ride. The, the trip was not enjoyable at all. Um, the, the way there and the way back, the best part of the video, the, the best part of the, the trip was the restaurant we stopped at in, in between time we get to Houghton Lake um, the rest of it was just terrible because it was so rough it was just so bumpy and I had other people that were you know going past us and um, we I saw you know the side-by-side -side blog guys if you know who those are I saw those guys, guys go past us they were just flying on the trails because their machines can handle it they got a lot better suspension and uh, a lot more travel so they could just handle the bumps the average speed that we had was about 16 miles an hour. So it's that's just going to show you how bad it was. Uh, so that's one thing that I would say is not the best on the, on the, on the machine. Now you can get better shocks for it. Um, the, uh, the current shocks on there, they have a, a compression and a rebound. Um, you can get Elka shocks for about $1,500 front and rear that do not have both the compression and the rebound settings. So I think this has just, just a rebound. So I would want to have both. So you have more compression, more adjustability. So the if you were to get ones that had the compression and the rebound, it would cost you about $3,000. So that's an option, you know, if, if you know, reliability or if, if uh, suspension is important to your you know, ride quality. Um, but for the most part, I don't really miss it. I mean, I don't really, I don't really feel that it's that worth it. For Three thousand dollars? I don't think so. Um, so if I did a lot of rough riding, a lot of places with a lot of whoops and stuff, then possibly. But other than that, no. So uh, the as I said, I got go, got about twelve hundred miles on it. Um, I've had it in the shop a few times, but every time I've had it in the shop, it's been for my own fault, things that I've done wrong. Like one time I had. Um, I went over, it was up down to down to um, Bundy Hill, and uh, I hit a big rock. Now from the distance, I saw the rock. I didn't think it was that big of a rock, and I thought I'd just glance over it. As I got closer to it, I realized it was a bigger rock than I thought. I should have just hit the brakes, but I thought, well, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Well, it busted the arm clean off. So. I tried to fix it myself, and I it so it impacted the frame so bad that I had to have um, the the dealership work on that. So that was another thing that I had. So I mean, that's the three times I had the, had it in the shop. Um, there was one time that uh, it was in the shop because of a water pump. It blew the seal in the water pump. Now that one is the one time that I can say is was probably the fault of the machine. Because they are notorious for having problems with the, there is a, um, a sensor that's supposed to go off and, you know, it goes off and tells you when the temp, when the, obviously when the temperature is too high and it kicks the fan on. That never kicked on. Now, I've been watching the thing. I would watch the thing on for a long time because I've heard they, were, they had that problem. And uh, I had, over, at this point, had over 500 miles of the machine. I thought, well, maybe... You know, that was the older machines, maybe maybe the 2017s, they fix that, and they don't have that problem. So I, but I kept, always kept a close eye on my temperature gauge every time I'd ride. Well, I had someone, I let someone else take it for a ride around the yard, and they just kind of were doing laps around the yard and stuff, and they never paid attention to the temperature gauge. It was actually flashing at them, and they should have turned the thing off and let it cool. And uh, they turned, when they got done riding, they turned it off, and they just started gushing antifreeze all over the all over the driveway 
and um, they um, they blew the seal in the water pump. That luckily was a warranty fit repair, though, so they did take care of that because it's known for those problems. So they so that was a, that was the other time I had in the shop. So it's always been my own fault. Um, the machine has been it just it's always been impressed me because the tires on that thing they're not they're not stock tires they're not like a cheap stock tire. They actually put name brand tires on there. And uh, they have so much bite. I have put that thing through some nasty muck. And it just it just goes right through it. I've only had it stuck so bad, you know, bad enough where I had to actually get pulled out. And my little quad, little two-stroke quad, um, was able to pull it out, surprisingly. But my two-stroke does have full drive on it. So, um it's got that going for it. But um, I all I need was just a little nudge going backwards and I was able to back right out. So it's, you know, it's been a great machine. You know, you have the the um, the low cost, because it already cost 10,000 brand new for, for an 800. And uh, then you have you have all the things that comes with it, like the winch, the, the, the hitch, the roof, the mirrors, um, the, the custom, you know, the, you know, the custom wheels and rims. And uh, so, the wheels and tires. And so, you know, it's. I read somewhere that it's got about four thousand dollars worth of extras that it comes with, that other manufacturers you'd have to pay extra for. And plus, it has a one-year warranty. Now, if you're in Canada, I think it's got a five-year warranty on them. So, and uh, you know, so you can't beat it. They're they're a really nice machine for the price. And uh, you're gonna get a lot of fun out of it. You know, I mean, I've had the. Bl it's been a blast. You know, my girlfriend loves it. You know, she loves riding it. My daughter loves it. So, um, you know, they both. That's the that's the two reasons why I bought the machine. It's because of them. It's because they both like to ride, and uh, I know that you know one of them have the experience riding, where they're not gonna wanna climb the hills by themselves. So I figured, you know, might as well do the best next best thing and get a side by side so they're right next to me and they can go up with me. No problem solved. So um, that's the main reason why I got it, and I've been happy with it, you know. So if you ask, well, you know, I've had, you know, because I did a lot of research on them when I first got it, and, uh, you know, everything, everybody keeps asking, you know, well, what's, you know, how long have you had it? What kind of problems have you had with it? What's the reliability? How would you, would you recommend it? Yes, I would highly recommend a CF Moto. They are, they are, they are very well-built machines. They have, um, the, the company that has, that, that makes them, um, you know, CF Motos are, are, uh, they've been around for over 30 years. Um, they are, they're getting, they're becoming more popular now in the United States. They've only been in the United States for about 12 years or so now. So, um, they are becoming more popular. And, uh, so you have, you have a lot more, you know, you're, you're, you're paying a lot less money for the machine and you're getting a reliable machine. You're getting plus you're getting all these extras that you have to pay extra for on other manufacturers. So for the price, the reliability you get is is you know it's un, unbeatable. You know if you want a low cost machine that will last you and that will be reliable and just you know keep you know, you know asking for more abuse. <laughs> I've abused it a lot. Uh, trust me, um, they are good machines. So um, anyway, I just just want to do a quick update. And uh, on this, as to where I've been, and hopefully we'll be getting, getting back on the trail soon. All right, catch you guys later.